Throughout history, there are watershed moments that change the world. Technology has made that a lot more frequent. Things like cell phones, credit cards, and the internet have changed the way that we interact with this world. There's another one that is right on the cusp. It's a new technology, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and Bitcoin, today on Hot Topics. This is Robert Furrow. If you're new here, we want to welcome you. Consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and ringing the bell so you can get all of our new content. The comment section is open below. We would love to hear from you. Two things before we start. Number one, this is not investment advice. I am not the guy that you want to be getting investment advice from. Number two, cryptocurrency, the blockchain, Bitcoin is not my area of expertise. I feel a lot more comfortable talking about the Bible than I do Bitcoin, but I want to go over the basics of Bitcoin and talk about how that fits into what the Bible says. First, let's talk about Bitcoin. It's kind of like when the internet came on the scene. There were a lot of people that didn't understand it. One of the talking heads on TV said, can anybody find out what internet is? The more we use the internet, and I would dare to say most of us really don't understand the internet, but the more we use the internet, the more comfortable we get with it. And that will be the same with cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology, and Bitcoin. The more we use it, the more comfortable we will be with it, even if we don't understand it. Maybe it would be better for us not to think about Bitcoin as an individual coin, but in its totality. Bitcoin starts off on a device. You have your computer, you have your phone, you have a ledger, you've got a tablet. And on that, you have a wallet. And from that wallet, you can go to an exchange and you can buy and sell Bitcoin. You could go to another individual that has a wallet on one of their devices and you could exchange Bitcoin with them as well. Someone said that having a wallet on your phone is like having a bank on your phone. And that's probably the best way for us to think about cryptocurrencies, specifically for this video, Bitcoin is that it's your own bank with your own bank account. And there are a lot of unbanked people around the world that have cell phones. And if they have cell phone and they have an internet, they would be able to exchange with one another. And countries that have had currency collapses, like Venezuela, a lot of people started using cryptocurrency because it was much more stable than their government. So Bitcoin is more than just a coin that's out there somewhere on the internet. It's a new way of interacting with currency, and that's what makes it so powerful. A couple more things about Bitcoin. It's built on top of blockchain technology. And many say that that's the real world changing thing that's happening now. You have computers, thousands of them that are connected together. In the case of Bitcoin, there's a blockchain that's connected thousands together, and they are verifying the ledger for Bitcoin every few minutes. And so if someone hacks one computer, the other ones will spit it out. And this will be the power of blockchain in the future. All those computers verifying things. And there's so many different things that could be verified on different blockchains. That's blockchain technology. Also, you have the mining of Bitcoins. That is that people began to mine Bitcoins. You could mine a Bitcoin on a personal computer for a while, and then it took more expensive rigs. But there's never going to be more than 21 million Bitcoin. Right now, there's about 18 and a half million Bitcoin. And the rate at which they're being produced or mined is slowing down, which is one of the reasons that the value of Bitcoin is going up right now. At the time of this taping, it's right around 28,000. In fact, I think it's like 28,700 right before I came in. The first transaction with Bitcoin was to buy two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin. So you can see how much it's gone up. And there's reasons for that. It is programmable money and Bitcoin solves certain problems within the financial system. And so people are beginning to put their trust in it. Now, that's a little introduction into Bitcoin. Again, I'm not saying whether or not you should buy or sell Bitcoin. I'm just saying cryptocurrencies are here to stay. There will be a U.S. dollar coin, a peso coin that is built on blockchain and cryptocurrency. Whether or not it's the same as Bitcoin, you can create your coin to have its own values. How many there are going to be? What can be done with it? Who it can be given to? Now let's talk about what I feel a lot more comfortable talking about, and that's the Bible. 
When we think about the last days and what the Bible has to say in Revelation and Daniel and Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah, we think of this worldwide collapse. That certainly is the case in the book of Revelation and Daniel. We see that there is this worldwide scope. There are those that want to say that all of Revelation was fulfilled when the Romans attacked Jerusalem in 70 AD. But it doesn't have that sense of everything happening around the world, a third of the water and a third of the land and all of those things it says in Revelation. It is global. But because Israel had not gone back into the land yet, because Israel had not returned to Jerusalem in the 1800s and even before that, they said that those things already took place because they could look back and see that Jerusalem was destroyed. And in the book of Revelation, you have Jerusalem being destroyed as well. They just didn't know that it was going to be reestablished. They should have because prophecy said that God was going to bring Israel back into the land and that the Jews were going to repopulate the city of Jerusalem. And for sure, we are going to get to the 70th week of Daniel, to the seven-year trial and tribulation period, and that explains everything. Things are going to be so bad, Jesus said, unless the time was shortened, no flesh would remain upon the earth. And that's pretty bad. But before that, the Bible says that there's going to be this sense of peace and prosperity. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them. So they are lulled into a false sense of peace and safety. And that happens around the world. I think it's happening even today, even as we are taping this, that there's this false sense of security, that the world is becoming a safer place, that there is peace. And the Antichrist himself, the last world ruler ruling over a revived Roman empire, brings peace. He makes a peace treaty with Israel. Now, not only that, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 18 that the entire world is going to be made rich. It's a pretty amazing statement and things can happen fast today, but somehow the wealth of the world is going to be lifted up and it's done through this system called Mystery Babylon. Not only that, the entire world is going to be made wealthy. Somehow, through a system we're going to talk about, the poverty level around the world is lifted and the entire world is made rich. So in Revelation 18, there's the destruction of mystery Babylon. It's a mystery. It cracks me up when people are like, I know exactly what that is. It says it's a mystery. Us pastors have to learn how to say, I don't know. Maybe I think it's this. Sometimes we come off like we have all of the answers and you guys should know we don't. I should say you guys already know that we don't. But mystery Babylon is destroyed in Revelation 18. It is a system. It's some kind of system that has allowed the whole world to become rich. It might be the financial system of the Antichrist. And when it collapses and is destroyed, the kings of the earth mourn because the world has been made rich by it. And all of the merchants, and then it lists commodities there in chapter 18, that they are not able to buy or sell them anymore. What is possible that happens is that cryptocurrencies allow the market to grow to be a world size. Today, we have separate markets. There are emerging markets in India and China. There's markets that have been around for a long time, like Europe and the United States. And these are different. And if we can begin to trade with one another, then it can be good for all of them. And if we have a worldwide market, if somebody in Uganda can trade with somebody in the United States or in Argentina, then all of a sudden it opens up and people begin to be able to make more money off of people. That's exactly what happens before Revelation 18. And then it's all destroyed. And there's great mourning and wailing over the earth. I don't know how it's destroyed, Remember that the first Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar was a type of this world. And mystery Babylon is somehow a type of this world as well, I believe. And because of that, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are all part of it. The Bible says they're perishing, but we're eternal. So we should not live for those things. But these things get the entire world rich on them, and then it's suddenly destroyed. And who knows what happens? Maybe the internet is finally destroyed and there can be no Bitcoin or there can be no cryptocurrency. The unthinkable happens. Something happens and the whole world is devastated. And I believe that we're beginning to see the technology that can make all of that possible. There's another passage that is very interesting when we think about currency. And that's the Antichrist 
who has the mark of the beast, which is 666, which is the number of man, triple the number of man, seven is the number of God, and somehow he will be identified that, let him, let him calculate, the Bible says, but this Antichrist makes an image of himself. Like so many other world dictators, this guy is ruling over the world, and his ego is huge, and he wants people to worship him. The way that leaders today around the world want people to worship him but this guy is ruler over the entire world and he tells people if you don't give your allegiance to me then you cannot buy or sell and somehow he's able to take away the ability of someone without the mark to be able to buy and sell i don't know that the mark is physical there's reason for us to believe that it's not in the old testament the children of israel were supposed to put the word of god on their forehead and the back of their hand it didn't mean to literally tattoo it on them. It meant that they would have their minds be the word of God and the back of the things their hands do be for the word of God. So this could be a copy that you give your allegiance, you give your mind, you give your hands to the Antichrist. And when you take that allegiance, now you're able to buy and sell. With programmable money, you could make it so that no one can buy and sell until they take the mark of the beast. No one's going to take it by accident. When I was a kid, I was told that barcodes were the mark of the beast. Later on, that credit cards were the mark of the beast. Chips were the mark of the beast. Now, vaccine is the mark of the beast. I don't know exactly what the mark's going to be. But one thing I do know is you won't take it by accident. You won't suddenly go, oh no, I took the mark of the beast. I'm doomed forever. You will make a decision to give your allegiance to the Antichrist. And that is one of the worst decisions that anyone could possibly ever make. But when you make that decision... Now you're allowed to buy and sell. And once again, blockchain, cryptocurrency, maybe even Bitcoin come into play. It might be this ability to be able to program that money and to, to put it directly into people's wallets or to allow them to suddenly be able to buy that we see taking place. It is amazing when we look in the Bible how much it can tell us about the future. Again, if you lived in the 1800s, you didn't know that Israel was going to become a nation again unless you knew that the Bible said that it would. You didn't know that people were going to be able to see all around the world unless the Bible told you everybody around the world was going to see one event happening. And today we have technology for it. And this technology to make the entire world rich, to be able to stop people from buying and selling, may very well be the blockchain, cryptocurrency, and Bitcoin.